What would you do if you found yourself aboard a train stuck in a thick forest in the dead of night? Oh, by the way, the forest? Yeah, it's filled with deadly humanoids. Today, we're going to discuss how to beat the humanoids in the 2015 British film Howl. Now, Joe Griffin is a ticket inspector and train guard with Alpha Trax Trains. His application to become a supervisor has just been rejected. And as if this wasn't bad enough, he has to do another shift on a midnight train to Eastboro because some guy Ken called in sick. Anyway, Joe and his stewardess crush Ellen are busy doing their jobs when the train comes to a sudden halt in the middle of a forest. The train driver, who gets out to inspect the situation, finds a freshly killed deer caught in the engine. But there's more to it. Someone, or something, dangerous is creeping around in the forest, and it comes for the driver and kills him. So, the train is left without a driver and with a damaged engine in the middle of this forest on a foggy full moon night with murderous humanoids roaming around. Now, when a bunch of strangers are locked together in a train surrounded by unknown horrors, you and I both know things aren't necessarily going to end well for everybody, for most of them, anyway. Few things are a given in such films. There will be at least one douchebag, someone stupid, someone nerdy, a few liabilities who are just gonna gunk everything up, someone who tries to help but ends up dead anyway, some people who are just around to die early on so the director doesn't <laughs> have to pay much attention to building a backstory for them, and some helpers who are gonna live only until the penultimate scene of the film. Al is no different, it pretty much ticks off all the boxes here. But if you're caught in a situation like this, you might wonder how you could make sure that you stay alive. Joe seems to have the right idea, calling for help first. But the control center guy informs him that it's gonna take at least four hours for a replacement engine to arrive. Four hours might be worth the wait if the eight or so passengers left on the train aren't so cranky and impatient. Also, at this point, they have no idea what happened to their driver and they're low on food. This guy suggests they walk to the station, which is probably just two or three miles away. Joe is a stickler for the rules and doesn't really like the idea. And he does have a point here. I mean, if you're unable to locate the driver, maybe someone should check out what happened to him before everyone just jumps out at once. But the passengers managed to coerce Joe into letting them all out. Great. Well, if you're gonna walk around in a dark forest, then it isn't such a bad idea to use that torch app on your phone so you can see if something's lurking around. Even if you don't know there's a dangerous humanoid roaming around, it's still useful to keep an eye out for any sneaky wild animals. After all, you are in the middle of a forest. You can save the batteries on a couple of phones to make important phone calls later, but it seems stupid that absolutely no one is using their phone lights. I mean, everyone's got them. Especially this girl who was just using her phone to blast music in a quiet zone. Anyway, they all hear this rustling sound coming from the trees and seconds later find the driver's dead body. By now, the source of the rustling sound seems to be running towards them. They all run back to the train, but the old couple is lagging behind, putting everyone in danger. As they manage to climb up the train, the old woman's leg gets caught outside the door, and she gets bitten by what now seems like a werewolf. Like I said before, things would have been much easier if only one or two somewhat athletic people had left the train to inspect the area first, not everybody. Then they would have found the driver's dead body and easily rushed back to the train to warn everybody else. But if you do get caught in a situation when a woman's leg has just been bitten by a creature who is right outside the train, please, please lock the door immediately. Otherwise, it might just try to attack again. Who knows? Also, listen to the victim because she saw the creature coming for her. It wasn't an animal. It, it was more like a man. Okay, so at this point, the passengers hear another sound, this time coming from the inside of the train. 
Turns out the noise is coming from this guy who has been stuck in an out of order toilet all this time because he had eaten a dodgy kebab. Also, he could have easily avoided this whole situation if he hadn't been on the toilet all this time, because he didn't even realize that he missed his station. That's a red flag. This guy is potentially stupid and definitely going to be a liability. Make sure someone is keeping an eye on such liabilities all the time if you ever get caught in a situation like this. Also, maybe instead of sitting around reading or drinking soda, make yourself useful and come up with a plan. Or just help this guy who says he knows about engines and how to repair them. He knows that there's a fuel leakage that needs to be patched for the train to restart, but they all just seem to forget this. What's the deal? In situations like this, the first few kills usually help you figure out the monster's weaknesses, and then you can leverage those to stay alive for longer. If you're not the train driver, you've already managed to not be the first one killed. That's a good thing. In this particular situation, also avoid being the person whose phone suddenly starts ringing loudly, because the werewolves seem to be attracted to loud noise. For instance, this werewolf easily crashes through the tampered glass window, grabs the girl whose phone just rang, and pulls her out of the window. If you're in this situation, now is the time for some insightful, low-volume discussion about the nature of these creatures who have already killed two people and bitten another in just about 20 minutes. So you definitely want to put your phone in silent mode and you definitely don't want to use loud tools like hammers. But these passengers are on a completely different path, sure, they're not keeping their phones on silent and they're using loud tools to reinforce all the windows and entry points. That too without realizing that one of the liabilities among them, Mr. Kebab Guy over here, is stuck in the toilet again. That's why I said before that someone has got to keep an eye on these people at all times. This dude basically just becomes a, a shitting duck for the werewolf while Joe tries and fails to help him out. Not only did this guy get killed, but now he's also putting Joe's life in danger, especially because this guy tries to lock Joe out of the carriage and let the werewolf feed on him, just so he can jump out of the train and get a head start on the werewolf. Only Joe has the keys to the door, so he has to save him. Which brings me to my next two pearls of wisdom for you all, if you will. One, make yourself useful at all times in a situation like this. That way people don't use you as bait. And two, always beware of jerks like this guy, because they're going to be the first to abandon you in a dangerous situation that they created in the first place. Identify them early on, and they really don't make this difficult either. Back to the story. Because of all the stalling by this guy, the werewolf has now managed to breach the carriage. Now, personally, I'd feel more comfortable up against the werewolves in the Harry Potter films, for instance, but whatever. Surprisingly, though, the passengers managed to kill the werewolf with knives, axes, hammers, and what have you. Yes, even this guy made himself useful. But then, the passengers waste way too much time in figuring out that what they just killed was a werewolf. It's a man. But his legs, his teeth, more like a dog's, more like a wolf's. I mean, come on, get there faster, it's clearly a fucking werewolf. Anyway, after they waste an entire minute coming up with this, this guy says... But we've killed it now, so we're sweet. Are you, though? Even if there is no other werewolf remaining in the forest, which is highly unlikely, wolves hunt in packs, you literally have this old lady turning into one in your carriage. Of course, this jerk notices his wolfish co-passenger and tries to convince her husband to get rid of her. Now that's some poor decision making right there. This is exactly the kind of thing that gets you tied up next to a werewolf. Now that they feel safe that the werewolf is dead, the engine expert decides to finally patch up that fuel leak. He teaches Joe and Ellen what they need to do to get the train running, before taking this dude with him as the lookout. Fucking die! 
<sighs> okay, the first rule of being the lookout for someone is to let them know before you abandon them to wander around. The second rule, don't go wandering around, even if you think someone is calling your name, because you might end up dead like this guy. Luckily, the engine leak gets fixed, and they get the train running as more werewolves surround them. But by now, the old woman has completely turned into a werewolf, and this woman makes the fatal mistake of letting this prick go. If you want to survive a situation like this, do not let the douchebag go, because it's always going to be you versus them. And then, when push comes to shove, they will be doing the shoving, and you will be pushed out of the train without any remorse. In the meantime, the old werewolf lady bites her husband and is now after the prick. The fuel tank starts leaking again and the train stops. Now, Joe manages to save this dude, but more werewolves have entered the carriage by now. Not surprisingly, the jerk uses Joe and Ellen as bait for the werewolves and jumps out to save his own ass. Luckily, the mechanic uses the leaked fuel to set some of the werewolves on fire. This gives Joe and Ellen enough time to get out of the train, but unfortunately, he himself is left to die. Joe and Ellen don't waste any time and start running for their lives, but they soon realize that it's gonna be difficult for them to outrun the werewolves. Joe, given his general nicety and his crush on Ellen, decides to sacrifice himself so Ellen can live. Ellen keeps running, while Joe makes a futile attempt to fight off the werewolves before ultimately being bitten. Meanwhile, this guy thinks that he's safe, but ironically meets his end when werewolf Joe attacks him. Karma is a bitch. In the end, Ellen is the only one who survives. So here are your steps to survival when caught in a train with werewolves around. Very unique situation, but you never know. Number one, be nice to everyone. Number two, do not die like this girl. Number three, be useful all the time. Number four, find someone who you know will be ready to sacrifice themselves for you. Number five, be a decent athlete.